anyway, uh, Walter, what I was telling is, is I really can't reload. I, yeah. I, I, I wish you give up the whole thing. You know, you don't have hardly any gear anyway. No. <laughs> I'm you struggling. Got, you only got what? Two rifles or something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And they don't even, I don't even know how to, sh to load them and shoot them, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, because that's the other trend. If you're going to reload, you got to also know how to shoot. And according to Mrs. High, High Boy, you, you, <laughs> you're not there yet. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're live, and we got a great live stream because, uh, well, it, it's so great because we got Walter. I mean, right there, right? And um, I do have to say that Walter, he brings a ton to the live stream because he – He's kind of like the big daddy, and everyone looks up to him like that. I know I do. So how you doing, Walter? We can't hear you. Here, here I tell everyone you're the big daddy. <laughs> can, can everyone hear me? I can't. Is it me? Now, Walter and me were just talking, man. I'm working. They can hear me, but they can't hear Walter. Um, I so okay. While Walter's figuring it out, uh, okay, guys, um, I have some things to share. I I can't make this up. Let, let me grab something, okay? While Walter is figuring out his uh, hey, if you have to exit out and re, re click in, it, it's okay. I got done with the last live stream. My wife handed me a package. Stay tuned. Endo snake four scopes. Um, I've been communicating with them. Really a nice company. I'm gonna so I'm gonna be working with these on the side once I get them all figured out. We'll do a live stream and you'll start seeing videos where I'm gonna begin looking at the. Uh, 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 I'll be maybe once a week do a video where I go clean one of my guns and check the, uh, the bore before and after. So, um, uh, stay tuned. So I, I just got Indo snake just sent these. It's huge. Um, I've had a lot of companies offer me these, um, these guys, they reached out to me a couple months ago and I didn't respond. I just, and then they got a hold of me and the guy was really nice and we started talking and I checked them out. And, uh, so, Stay tuned. Okay, Walter's trying to come back on. Let's see if this is going to work. Mike was working. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? No? I can hear you, but it's broke up. Okay, how about now? One, two, three, four, five, four, three. Oh, two, there. Okay. there. We, we got you, Walter. Right. Hey, uh, well, what I was just showing the guys, um, Endo Snake sent me three of these. Yeah. Um, they, they sent me one that didn't work for my application. So they sent me two more and I just got those uh, two today. So, um, this is really cool. So I'm going to uh, work with these and I'm going to have a live stream talking about these, how they work. I really do like their product. They reached out to me a couple months ago. And, um, I honestly, when companies reach out to me, I, I don't really respond but then they reached out a second time and I was, I, I, I really looked at them and I thought, man, and then I uh, talked to the, the guy over the email. It was really nice. I thought, man, that's a nice guy. So uh, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I've got one. I think I have one of their snakes too. Oh, really? Yeah. You get, get, uh, if you do get it going and let's do a live stream on it. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, so I want to start this out by telling everybody, um, Walter and I were talking a little bit about this, but 
for those of you that are new to my channel, you have no idea what the early days of my channel was. <laughs> Walter laughed. Uh, I used to do this thing starting in January. It was, uh, we call it the Festivus for the rest of us. After Christmas was dead. I love Christmas, but it's like people are so greedy. They ruined Christmas and forget what Christmas is really about. So what we would do after the first year, I would have my uh, company lineup and I would reach out to the companies and they would, uh, they would uh, provide really neat giveaways. And so I used to do it every year, but the problem was, is it was so much work, like hundreds of hours. I would have to start it in September to have everything ready by the first of the year and it burned us out. Well, now we're going to start doing the giveaways on the forums and we're going to integrate it into the YouTube it's huge. There's going to yeah. be a, there's going to be, I, I, I'm just thinking I'm going to have a giveaway every week, but you got to be on the gun forum. So in the, in the description box below, click on 76 highboy.com, go over there, get signed up because once the giveaways are going, I won't, you know, someone says, Oh, hang on, let me subscribe. Nope. You'll have to wait till the next week. So, so go get over there. But the other thing is um, if someone when we have the giveaways, it, whoever the winner is, I'm going to check them and see if they're doing regular regular posts. If they're just someone that's sitting there waiting to win something, nope, they won't win. It'll be the next guy. So there you go. So um, uh, how is everybody? Um, uh, Walter, you want to you want to call some names? You want to call some names off? Let's see. Who's, let's see who's who's here. Hey, you guys. Um, uh, Go ahead and type something. Let's see. Let's just type 30 30 and see who's here. I'll call them out. And then I want to tell Vanilla Gorilla something right after this. Okay. Gonna, I, I want to share something with him. Go for it. Okay. Put it in there, guys. 30 30. I'm here. We know High Boy's kind of here. Idaho Rogers USMC is here. TRD, his own self, is here. Six Shooter Jackson's here. Reb Tyree, Andy 79Z28 is here. Uh, Anthony Infantino is here. Cameron B is here. The Vanilla Gorilla is here. Stanley Hammer, Sasquatch Seven Foot's here. Les Olson. Hi, Les. Uh, Michael Form is here. Says we got 21 on. We got probably 15 of you. So responded oh there's randall okay so we got we got a pretty good bunch that jumped right on right at the get-go there's rollo uh rollo man i'm gonna struggle with this one tomase is that right i, I pronounce it tomas he's really okay. awesome okay tomas it is then okay so I want to answer a question, uh, Vanilla Gorilla. Man, he he's he's a longtime follower. He's a really awesome guy. He asked who has the uh, cheapest price on the the Reading T7 turret. Well, I got to tell you guys this. Don't mean to sound repetitive, but what keeps the forum lights on? We don't make a lot of money, trust me. Is if you look in the description box below, you're going to see a bunch of links. In the description box, you're going to see T7 turret and a link that says bit.ly. If you click on that, that takes you to Brownells. They have their that press on sale periodically. What I'm saying is, is if you click on a bit.ly link and you order through Brownells, we get 5% of that sale. They send it to us, and that's what keeps the forum going. That's what keeps my, my camcorder is on its last leg. That's what keeps the camcorder going. And, and uh, like I just destroyed um, this round, all the little things that it costs to keep things going, that, that that's what replenishes. So to answer your question, uh, the links on all of my videos go to Brownells. If you watch them, they have as good a pricing as anybody. And so it supports the channel. Okay. Right. So, and so there you go. From Brownells, almost always that I've seen has the free shipping over forty nine bucks or whatever it is. So yeah, you figure that in shipping a T press or T seven press, not cheap for most other folks. So, so Anthony's saying my picture quality is fuzzy. It's really clear on my end. How about you, Walter? 
Um, when I look at my side, it looks sharper than yours does. And so I think it's just. And I look sharper than you. So I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to improve it except my camcorder's going out. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I'm on my last leg. Yeah. Okay. So um, where do we want to start, Walter? Well, um, you've, you've got about a. Uh, what 15 video head start on 3030 30 already i don't know how many you've got going in there but you had a bunch of them so i th i thought i'd see where i am with it um so the guys will know where i'm coming from and so i started shooting 30 30 i'm gonna say 50 years ago now it's been a long time and uh the the first rifle i owned was this little hooksy right here <clears throat> Uh, the the first the first rifle in 3030. So this is my my old Winchester 94. I bought this in 19. I'm gonna say 78 or 79. I can't even remember when I bought it. Still in pretty good shape. I mean, it's it's got a couple I don't know a couple little funky spots here and there from carrying it horseback. Um, there's some rub spots on the stock and whatnot from having it scabbard. But um, I hunted this rifle just the way you see it. No optics. Hunted with that little guy right there, um, and it always got me my buck. You know, I didn't take any trophy animals, but back when I was hunting a lot, if I didn't hunt, I didn't eat. That was pretty much the story when I was getting started. And so, um, and, and I kind of quit hunting, actually. I haven't hunted in a long time. But, so, I'm going to be loading again for this rifle. This rifle has not been fired in over 30 years. It's nice and clean. I've kept it up. Um, the action's still just butter smooth on it. Um, and it, it's a, it was a good rifle in and it's still a good rifle. So I'm going to be working with that rifle. And I'm going to be loading. I'm going to be doing pretty much everything that the high boy is doing, except I'm using this bullet. This is a cast bullet. Um, it's 153 grains powder coated and gas checked. Mm. That's out of a Lee mold. It's their 150 grain mold. And for that, partly for that reason... Um, I'm not going to use my Redding die set. Um, I have a Redding die set for 3030, incidentally. I have a Lee die set too, which um, is, has a, a problem with the uh, sizing die. Well, well, okay, well, I have some questions. Why wouldn't you use the Redding die set? Okay, what I'm going to use are these right here. These are the RCBS Cowboy set. And what the Cowboy dies do. They're specifically designed to be used with cast bullets. And the difference is, so obviously there's some difference or I would be using the Redding set. The difference is in the, in the flaring. And the Redding um, die set doesn't quite give us the flare on our case mount that we want for a cast bullet. So for our cast bullets are a fatter diameter, right, than our, than our jacketed bullets. We want our cast bullets to be at least a thousandth um, over groove diameter. Well, what happens then is that if you use a standard flare, so, mm -hmm. you know, which isn't much for a Yeah, that's bullet, right. It doesn't take much. And if it's a boat tail, yeah. it doesn't take any. Okay. But uh, if you use a standard flare... Two things happen. Um, when you go to put your slightly oversized cast bullet in there, it, it didn't want to go. Okay. And yeah. you start shaving lead. And so you, you expand it even more. And without the proper shape flare, like, and I almost hate to say this, but I will anyway, like, like the uh, blunderbuss flare that Lee dies tend to do, if you try to do that, uh, and make that flare big enough to accept the cast bullet. Now you have problems getting into your seating die. Yeah, I, I, and, I get that. And you, you, you shove this guy up there and, and that blunderbuss flare starts scraping on the inside of your seating die and bringing that flare back in. But the cowboy dies, the seating die is wider. It's got a wider bore in it. For, um, to so really, with my reading, all I would need is that seat die for RCBS. Well, no, I would, uh, yeah, I would need the flare too. 
you might, you know, you, um, the, you can try it. See, if you get a decent enough flare with your, with your, um, I thought I had one flared out here, but I don't, um, with your reading set, try it and see. And, and if you do, um, mm -hmm. then, then there's no point in buying another, um, flaring die, but yeah. Would you I, hold that? Would you hold that bullet up that you cast? I'm going to hold yeah. mine up and I want you to hold yours up. Um, Hang on just a second. I, I've got um, some of these Sierra bullets too. Are you are you loading the, you're loading the 150 Sierra? Yeah. Okay, I got some of those here. Let me put them up side by side. If I can learn how to open a box of bullets, it'd be handy. So, show the base of yours. Well, this one's gas checked. Exactly. That is it. More square on your base. It is. It, yeah, yeah. That is not a, that is not a beveled base, like that. Yeah. Sierra bullet is. You can see that. That that, that, that makes base. sense on those dies. I've right. never loaded a cast bullet for thirty thirty. Yeah, and and so this this guy here. We'll we'll start. That 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 um, yep. base has not been sized or flared. Well, I'll mm -hmm. take it back. It's been sized, but it has mm -hmm. not been flared. And so it, it, that thing would, there it is. I mean, it's sitting up in there and, and you can run that baby right down in there with all the neck tension you want. Yeah, so, right. Um, but as soon as you go put that gas check on there, now you got, you know, a fairly flat base on there. And, and that, so that's going to make a difference. Um, and... And Vanilla Gorilla says, is Redding that superior? Redding makes some fine quality dyes, you guys. And their um, uh, seeding stem, the competition seeding stem, particularly for the pistol bullets, um, can't be beat. It's got a, a, a two-step. You're breaking up, Walter. Flare. Oh, sorry. It's got a two-step flare on that Redding die. Yeah. Um, and I really like that. that that's a, that's a, nice, uh, a, a nice flare die. I was trying to look for a bullet. I, I don't oh. know where it's at. But anyway, that's uh, that's what I'm going to do. Here's that. Here's a uh, man. No primer, but that's that's the load um, uh, with that 173 or 153 grain cast bullet. That's awesome. And and you can I, see if I bring this up closer. You if you look close, you might be able to see where the base of that bullet is down there but it's got yeah. plenty of neck tension um and these are sized at 0 0.309 okay so I, I got a question for you if you would hold that back up would you hold that back up and hold a, a, a bullet next to it when you seat that where do you get the mouth of the bullet in relation to and let, let me full size your screen let me take me off so, okay, uh, tell us where you see to. Okay, so where I'm seating this bullet through, this bullet has a crimp groove. Okay, and that, let me get a pointer. This bullet has a crimp groove right there. So, that's where I'm. That's where I'm seeding that to. All right. Okay. So now I have a specific uh, uh, a question. Um, to get that roll crimp, you have to be in that crimp groove. You can't be too low. You have to be in it, don't you? Well, you should be. Uh, and this bullet has several grease grooves in it, and you could conceivably crimp down into one of these grease grooves. But a roll crimp that if you yeah. were to, if you were to put a roll crimp between, let's see if I can get them closer up here between the crimp groove right up here and that grease groove. If you were to roll crimp on that on that. Um, Bearing surface right there, mm -hmm. you'd be cutting into the lead. Yep. 
and you wouldn't want to do that. The whole idea on these on these crimp grooves is is that they it's a it's a beveled edge up in that mm -hmm. bullet. Yeah. And so you want that brass mouth to kind of you know conform to that shape and not not dig down more, not take an yeah. S curve back out from it. You want that bent in and just just over that crimp groove. Yeah, and that's because where it's gonna lock and hold in place. If you if you follow the recipe and you go by the cartridge overall length and it's outside of the cantaloupe, that can actually cause that round to not chamber. Yes. Uh, the, the roll crimp won't go down into the bullet. It'll be kind of puffed out and it's not going to chamber. You'll go to uh, put that in your case cage and, and it won't work. Yeah. And I think the, I think the Sammy Max for, if I'm not mistaken, and hi boy, you can correct me for, uh, overall length for 3030, is it not 2.55? 2. I, I, I think that's where it is. But um, this came up one other time. I said, do you, and somebody was saying, well, I loaded it to the what it said um, for the max case length, and it didn't look like it was right. Well, that's max, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different for each bullet. This one here is coming in um, at 2.55. Four, three, five. Okay, and and that is, you know, with a cast bullet at least, that overall length is governed by where that crimp groove is. It's, mm -hmm. it's not governed by necessarily what the book says, which brings up another point, which is a, a bit of an irritant. This is a this is a Lee round. It's That's a, a what? It's a, it's a Lee cat. It's a cast bullet from Lee, and Lee doesn't even show that bullet in their in their loading data for thirty thirty. <laughs> And it's a it's a really commonly used one, so um, you have you have to kind of figure out on on your own based on other 150 grain cast lead bullets um, what you're going to use for a powder charge, and then kind of work up slowly find one that's gonna that's gonna feel good, look good, and perform well. Um, but um, keep talking. I'm gonna try and yeah. uh, do something. I'm gonna try and illustrate something here. Yeah. And and I'm going to be using uh, uh, 3031 powder for this for this round. 3031, 3031, yeah. And there, there's not a whole lot of reason for that. Um, I know you're going to be using TAC, but I have some 3031, and I and I want to yeah. try it. Well, I've never I've never used it with this bullet, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and then kind of while we're at it, <laughs> speaking of. Speaking of dummy rounds, you're looking at dummy number one here, and I got—I wanted to share this with you guys too. So I made these, I made three dummy rounds the other day, okay? Um, there's a, a Hornady bullet, and it's a, got a little bit rounder nose than what I would like for a lever gun, but it's, it's a soft point and it'll work. Um, and then here's the round loaded with a Sierra bullet. And then here's a dummy round that I made with that same cast bullet. It's just not powder coated. Yeah. So, um, so why do we make dummy rounds? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is so that you've got one with bullets you plan on shooting. You've got a, a, a round that you have seated at the correct depth. You can take it into your into your press and um, get it up into your seating die, and then run your seating die down to the, where the stem touches this. Back your seating die off a couple thousandths, and then start seating. And it gives you a faster shot at getting um, your seating die adjusted. So that's one reason to have a, a dummy round um, for each bullet you have. The other one is that you want to test and make sure that these are going to chamber in your rifle. And I think High Boy was talking about that um, in the live stream earlier. So I did that. And this rifle is unloaded. Okay, there's, there's nothing in there. Okay. Um, so... I make these dummy rounds and we go ahead and we put a, one of them in there and it goes in there just fine. And then I go to put the second one in here and it would go, let's see how far did I get that thing up in there? It would go maybe this far <laughs> and it wouldn't go anymore. And so I don't know what's, well, I'd go down there and I'd mess around with it a little bit more and oh, then it would go in that far and not go in. <laughs> farther and and the third round probably wouldn't go in at all and I'm thinking oh, what in the world um, 
is going on here. Let me get this guy out of here. What's going on with that um, dummy round? And I, I thought, well, you know, I hadn't really shot this rifle in a long time. And maybe a mouse or something, <laughs> who knows, is up there in the, in the uh, magazine tube. So I took the end of it off and pulled the spring out. And it was a little, you know, dusty and uh, whatnot in there. But it wasn't fouled. I mean, there was nothing plugging it. And I well, maybe the spring's bad. I went so far as to order another spring, um, which turned out to not be the case. That was 10 bucks wasted, but now I got a spare spring. Um, and so what it turned out to be, I had this epiphany after I messed with this thing for about two hours, trying to figure out what in the world was causing those rounds to not want to load past the first round. And I thought, well, it has to be the, it has to be the cartridge. There's nothing wrong with the mag tube. There's nothing wrong with the action. There's nothing wrong with the side gate. I checked all of that stuff. The only thing it could be was there was something wrong with these guys. Well, what it turned out to be was, and, and I thought about it, is I had tried to load them in this configuration. What do you guys see? No primer, right? When they worked, I shoved a, a dead primer up in them and then they fed fine. So what was going on was that with this empty primer pocket, when I'd go up there and look, the first one would go in fine, but the second one, the nose would kind of stick up in there into that, that first round's empty primer pocket and start cocking that thing up a little bit in the mag tube and that would freeze it up in there. And it, and it wouldn't go forward to, to allow the next one to come in. That was one of those things where you want to just go pound your head against, <laughs> against the wall go, you moron. Why would you think that would even work <laughs> with, with the, a cartridge in a, mag in a tubular magazine like that? So if you're going to make dummy rounds for your uh, uh, tube-type uh, magazine rifles, you guys, shove a, a, a dead cart a spent cartridge in there or a, a primer up in that pocket first and, and – That'll make a big difference. Save you a lot of frustration. But I had to, you know, after I got done beating my head against the wall, I laughed at myself for that one. But, um, well, let's see, a couple comments here. Uh, six Shooter, yeah, he was, he, and, and Six, I think uh, uh, you posted that on the, uh, on the form that you used the, that Lee 150 with Trail, with Trail Boss. And, uh, since I've talked to a couple other guys who do that too, um, and you get a nice plinking around, fill that thing up to about 70% or so case capacity, maybe eight grains or something of, of uh, trail boss. Uh, I'm gonna try that too. I've never used it uh, with 3030. And then um, Jerry Mont said, does anyone make cannonure machines anymore? I don't know. I haven't seen one in a long time. Okay, and Wesley says that Corbin makes them, okay. So, anyway, so there's, there's that. Um, let's see, what else was I going to say about the 3030 stuff? Oh, I saw, I saw High Boy mentioned, uh, mentioning on um, the, that early video, that earlier live stream, that he was using a... a uh, 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 a, what a seating die with the stem pulled out as his fourth station um, slash. Uh, yeah. Quick. Okay. And and that's that's what I what I'm doing here too. This is this is the uh, seating die out of my old Lee set, which does a, a very nice job on the crimp. You can see that's got a nice nice crimp into that yeah. crimping, crimping groove, and it and it does it does a good job, and it's fine for that. Okay. Um, there, I, there might be other dyes that do better. I know that uh, a, a couple of people have talked, or me, and it might have been me talking about the Lee Factory crimp dye. Um, and their rifle dyes mostly, this is the Lee Factory crimp dye for 3030, but it's a collet type crimp. And, and I don't, you know, it does not give you a roll crimp. It gives you a flat crimp, which might be okay for a um, 
a bullet that has no cantalure. Anyway, it's not, it's not satisfactory at all for a cast bullet with a crimp groove. You don't want to use that. Okay, you want to you want to roll crimp. Okay, so six two wants to know what kind of velocity um, I'm getting with the thirty thirty. Um, <laughs> and seven six two, um, I got to wait until I shoot these, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. That rifle has not been fired thirty some years, and that was the last time I shot that rifle. It hadn't been shot, and I haven't shot any other thirty thirty since then. So this is it's almost like starting a whole new ball game here for me um, with with that particular rifle. So I, you know, I'm I'm guessing, and I'm just and it's just a guess that I'm going to be loading these between fifteen and seventeen hundred feet per second. I don't know. That's what I would guess. So that, that's kind of what I'm going to look for. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just I, and I'm again I'm not going to hunt with this. I don't think. I mean I could. I still got my hunting license and whatnot. But um, I have I'm, I'm not feeling any burning pain to go out and kill one of our little hundred and ten pound white you know coastal white tails here, but um i would said oh no i'm sorry that was so bad <laughs> you'd shoot anything <laughs> darn right i'll take bambi mm, <laughs> buttered backstrap oh okay so <clears throat> real quick before i get into this sasquatch seven foot uh has a question for you oh so you're using uh, um 100 lead and then powder coating is it safe to use well um Remember that in the in our early days of black powder shooting, and and those guys would load some of these rifle rounds up pretty good, and they used breaking up really you know, bad. I don't know why. They used they used pretty soft lead, and, and maybe I'm shouting too loud. How about if I quiet down? Is it any better? That, that's when you kind of back up a little bit, then okay. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, maybe I was too close to the mic. Um, but the, the, the uh, you know, used to use pretty soft lead. It's easy to cast and, and, you know, traditionally lubed and whatnot. Um, but I, I'm thinking with our, our higher velocities, you know, certainly we want, when that bullet comes out of the, out of the case neck, you want that bullet to expand enough to fill the grooves and obturate the barrel. Because if you don't, you're going to get leading. Um, so if it's too hard, that won't happen. Um, so the other thing is, is that the, the bullet has to be hard enough so that it's not going to, um, tear apart, so to speak, uh, when you shoot it. I, I think a hundred percent lead might be a little bit on the soft side. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, I would think you want to for you know for a round like this I, I, that's going out there 1700 feet per second or more you might want to at least have it up to around 12 bhn which and powder coated um mm -hmm. gives you a little little more protection yet um so i i don't think i'd use so you know 100 soft lead I, i'm just kind of leery of it but i'm not the expert either on on that i i i gotta say that most of my rounds that I shoot are from rain scrap that comes out at around BHN 12 um, after casting and powder coating. And that's been fine for just about everything um, I do. Even, even these big guys that are, I'm getting ready to load up for that new 4570 I got. Um, they don't need to be, th these are BHN 15 right now they they came out of the water quench when i cast them at um bhn like 18 or 19 and that was a little too hard so when i powder coated them i just let them air cool and that brought them back down to about bhn 15 which would be fine for that bullet that's a big old bullet <laughs> i'm almost scared to go shoot that 4570 that sucker's a beast <laughs> uh, so now in, in kind of um what I started out talking about, you know, where where in that uh, groove do you seat the bullet to? Yeah. I want to show the viewer something. So, um, in our Sierra Load Data Manual, our overall length is 2.520, right here. 
2.520. Now I'm going to show you something. Okay, that's pretty much 2.520. I'm a thousandths off. That, 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 that'll work. But you see, I'm not into that cantalore. On a um, jacket bullet, that's going to be called a cantalore. On a cast bullet, it's a crimp groove. But as you see, we're just right into, uh, yeah, he's showing you the full cantalore. I'm just barely into that cantaloupe. Yeah. Well, on the 3030, um, you, you want a roll crimp. You don't, they don't taper. A roll crimp's going to go like this. It's going to roll it. Well, the problem is, is if it can't go into that cantaloupe, it's going to push against the bullet and it's going to bulge out. And that's not going to seat for you. Uh, I mean, it's not going to chamber for you. So, this is what you do. You're going to work your seat stem downward. To where you're somewhere around 70 to 90 percent up on your cantaloupe, and then you're going to roll crimp it, and it'll be a nice roll crimp. It'll be uh, a proper roll crimp, and it will hold that bullet. The reason they don't, uh, the reason that they don't taper crimp on the 3030 is because. We have a row of cartridges stacked in a magazine, and upon recoil, they're slamming into each other. Okay? And so what you don't want is you want the head of this cartridge to push up against this bullet and for the case. You don't want that. So it's got to be a roll crimp. Well, for that roll crimp to be right, you've got to be into the candle. Now... Because you're probably 20,000 deeper, because we're starting a min load, we don't have to worry about pressure because now you're going to develop your um, your load of that length and you're going to work your charge weight up for signs of overpressure. So does that uh, make uh, sense to everybody? See you, reloader, dude. Have a good one. Okay, Roy, have fun. Take care of yourself. Okay, so what next, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bunny? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, I, before we got started, I thought I had all kinds of stuff to talk about with the 3030, um, but we may have got most of it, most of it covered. I did want to mention these cowboy dies and why I'm using those for that particular bullet as opposed to the the reading set if I go to the reading if I go to this bullet you know go to a jacket bullet I'll, I probably will pull out the reading dies yeah right but uh, again and that that's that's the reason for it uh, let's see what else oh I know I, I pulled out a I pulled up this case, which we look at the bases of these two cases. Those two cases are the same base, um, and they use the same shell holder, but and, and they're similar in length, but one of them's necked and the other one isn't. So this was the parent case for 3030, and that's the uh, 3855. Mm -hmm. um, and so all they did to get to a 3030 case is take this case and neck it down. In fact, I could run this case up into my 3855 dies and come out yeah. with a 30, 30 case. Mm -hmm. It'd be a little bit long. It'd have to be trimmed. But yeah, uh -huh. um, and there is a little bit of difference in the 
thickness of the head down there, but not not much. They, I, you know, I've tried it and they'll function and cycle in the 3030. Um, but that's I found that interesting that that 3855 was the parent of the 3030. I didn't know that. I just recently found that out and somebody told me, said, yeah, you can make 3030 out of 3855, which I didn't know why you do that. Um, I'm gonna... Because 3030 case is a lot cheaper than a 3855, 3855 case. New I'll be right back, Walter. I'm going to grab something. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Oh, somebody wanted to see that 3855 too, talking about that. So. I'm hearing that feedback too, and I can't figure out where it's coming from. Sorry about that. Here's, uh, here's this new 3855. It's got some really nice checkering on it um, from Henry. And I put Skinner Peep sights on all my Henry's. I really like those. That's a real fast target acquisition for me. Um, and if you look at this, there's two slots on the side of this, this weapon. And so this is Henry's new side gate loader. And we also have a magazine tube. So you get your choice on how to load. You can, you can load through the side here. You can open up the tube just like any of the other Henry's and, and load into there. The advantage of keeping that tube that way is with Henry's uh, tube magazine, the end pulls out, it's spring loaded. And so you can just pull that out and dump your extra rounds out instead of having to crank them through like you do with the Winchester or something. So, um, and when I get done with what I'm gonna do with this rifle, um, I have kind of a family history reason for, for picking this rifle up. And when I get all done with the photos and stuff that I wanna do with it, um, I'll share all that with you guys on, on, on why I have it. Um, It's, it's certainly not for me to go hunting with, because I said I'm kind of done hunting. But... Um, so I want to talk about something for a moment that uh, Andy brought up. So when I referred to the cartridges uh, being loaded into the 3030, I called it a magazine. And Andy said, stacked in a tube, not a magazine. So I'm going to read something to you. And this is uh, the small arms lexicon and concise encyclopedia uh you know what you need to do run over to ebay really quick and find the cheapest one of these you can get man the the, the definitions in this are unreal okay so let's uh, talk about a little bit what andy said um so i referred to this as a magazine you're like no no it, the, uh he's saying uh stacked in a tube, not a magazine. All right, here we go. I'm gonna read some definitions. The definition of a magazine, a container for cartridges, which has in it a spring and follower to feed cartridges into the chamber. It may be a separate piece to be inserted into the gun or an integral part of the gun. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to, um, uh, magazine tube i go to magazine tube and it says see tubular magazine this is a very concise book so i'm going to go to tubular magazine uh yeah and and i've always referred to that as a tubular magazine you broke up there, Walter. Or, uh, right? I can't read. <clears throat> okay. And I think traditionally the term magazine has been, you know, may have, may have been, you know, we all know the, the uh, controversy between the terms clip and okay. magazine. Everybody knows that. But magazine... That, that definite or that term has always been also used to define any storage area for yeah. anything related to our you know our, our firearms. We had powder magazines, you know, which were could be a storeroom somewhere. So here's the definition of a tubular magazine. You'll hear me refer to it as a 
magazine tube or a magazine. A tube, a magazine common to both rifles and shotguns, usually located under the barrel, though occasionally contained in the butt stock. Yeah, the old uh, uh, red pump action. No, what were they? Twenty-two rifle. What were those? Uh, I gotta think about that for a minute. Anyway. A tubular in form and designed to store cartridges end to end. So it is a it is a magazine. Um, uh, it's a magazine we're uh, we're familiar with. I will tell you one place where I grossly use that wrong. Where I grossly use that wrong right here, and I don't know that anyone has ever caught me on it. Here. Hang on. Am I getting beeping? I'm I'm hearing feedback, but to me, it, huh? I only hear it when you talk. I don't hear it when I talk. So I don't know. I've tried messing with my volume. I thought it might have been my volume setting was too loud and it was feeding back through my system. But it, I've turned the volume all the way off a couple times. And it didn't Hang on. Uh, let, let me... Um... Uh, yeah. Hang on, let me see if I can correct it. I don't know what's causing it. Do you hear it? And are you guys hearing it when I talk as well, or is it just when Highboy talks? Okay. But, I mean, it could be something feeding back from, from my voice into his camera that's making that feedback. I don't know. Okay, just yeah. Well, uh, Patriot, quit because nobody's talking. <laughs> Hi, but I don't hear you at all if you're talking right now. I hope he didn't just shut his entire volume off because I don't hear him. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Now I got you. Okay. Okay. I'm not hearing any feedback. Okay. Uh, Stanley Hammer is saying, doesn't the Remington Nylon 66? Yeah, that's what I, I was going to say, a Remington rifle. Yeah, the, it has the tubular uh, buttstock. Uh, uh, but I'll tell you where I use the word magazine tube. Totally incorrectly, and no one's ever caught me on it. Are you ready? Right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and, and I think that that's what the, I think that's what some of the press manufacturers call them also. No, they call them primer tubes. Well, but, you know, there's a primer magazine right there well no no <laughs> that's that would be a primer tube um the reason it's not a magazine is there's no spring if uh, that had a spring and a follower to push the primers then it would be a a, a magazine tube but that one is what i'm going to call a primer tube and that's and that one feeds this guy yeah i call it a magazine tube yeah Hey, tomato, tomato. I don't get mad at people for, you know, asking me about the clips for my Glock anymore. I I, yeah, it. yeah. It's not worth just, the discussion anymore. <laughs> just so we know what we're talking about. Okay, so um, we haven't covered a lot of ground, but we've covered some good ground. Um, yeah. Where do you want to go from here? Uh, let's see. Somebody at one point asked to see this contraption. That I, I made, and this is uh, this is my bullet lube mold, which which turned out to work really good. I was surprised. Most of my brainstorm ideas fall kind of flat, but this worked really well. Um, so partly, uh, along with the the story of that 3855 rifle, I wanted to get my uh, uh, 
RCBS Lubomatic out and start and get it going again and be able to do some traditional lubing for that particular rifle. And I'm probably only going to use it for a few rounds, but anyway, I ended up getting, getting the, uh, the uh, Lubomatic out and I didn't have any lube. And so I was going to order some and, and it uses these, these stick lube molds or stick lubes. Let me get one out of here. So the, the RCBS Lubomatic uses a lube stick like this, got a hollow center, and that's because the machine has a, a, uh, a centering pin that kind of goes down through there um, in, the, uh, in the lube magazine <laughs> of, of the uh, uh, lube sizer press. So I didn't have any. And so I wanted to make some, and there's uh, the guys who cast probably already know this, but there's a million recipes out there for homegrown bullet lube. And I got to looking around and looking for um, a recipe for one, and just to see if I had stuff on hand um, that I could could make it with. And and I did. I have. I had a bunch of beeswax, and I had some paraffin, and I had some uh, Vaseline, petroleum jelly. And sure enough, I found a recipe that used those in about equal um, proportions. I said, well, I'll try that. And so I, I uh, decided to uh, make it. But then I needed a mold that I could pour the melted, the molten lubricant into. You melt all that stuff together in a pot carefully. Uh, it has low flash point, you gotta be careful. And so I needed a, a tubular mold of the correct size to pour that melted lube into to make a stick that would fit into the lubomatic. So that's just PVC, it's exactly one inch di internal diameter, and that's what those lube sticks are. So then I needed a, to have a, uh, a, a hole down the middle. So I just cut a piece of steel rod and there's a washer that, that's a one inch washer that just fits in there exactly, but it was a quarter inch washer and that's a 5 16 rod. So I had to drill out, washer out a little bit. But that ends up down at the bottom of that PVC pipe. And what that does is two things. You pour the lube in there, it helps keep that lube from running out the bottom. Doesn't keep it all from running out the bottom. I discovered you gotta pour a little bit in there, let it set first and then dump the rest in. Um, and then what you would do is you take this thing full of your lubricant and put it over here on this dowel rod and push it up. And then this would have that lubricant in a stick form wrapped around it that off of there and then with that that washer on the end you could pull that rod out with kind of holding that washer in place and that would sort of peel the the lube stick off the washer anyway that's that that worked out pretty well i just took a piece of two by four 11 inches long 11 inches because an 11 inch piece of two by four will put in, will fit into this throwaway aluminum pan um, to catch any stuff that comes out or, you know, spills and it will spill. Um, took a Forster bit drill, appropriate size holes in the, in the two by four there. Um, got a couple of slip to slip pipe caps, drilled a hole, appropriate size hole in that. And all that does is keep that, that rod centered while the stuff is hardening up. Anyway, it's a simple project. I got nothing in it for money because it was stuff I already had anyhow. And it, it produced this, this is, it was just kind of a little chunk of that lube. And I, I don't really like, I didn't really like the lube. Um, I'm probably gonna remelt it and, and add some other stuff to it. And it was a little bit too soft for me, um, for my liking, which means that I, I'm afraid it's gonna melt. Yeah. Until the temperature. Um, I, it, 
it's probably 120, 140 degree melting point is all that stuff is, and that's a little bit low, I think. Anyway, yeah. um, I'm going to add some more, melt it all the way down, I think, and add some paraffin um, to it to harden it up just a little bit. But uh, so it's beeswax and and uh, Vaseline and paraffin, and no allox because I shoot mostly indoors, and you don't like you don't want to use that allox lubricant indoors very much. It's not good for Why you. Why is so. that? Why? Uh, the when that stuff uh, vaporizes, apparently the that that vapor and the smoke from the alox is a little bit toxic. I didn't know that. Outdoors where you got good ventilation, um, the alox itself is a great lubricant. Um, I, I it, hear that it works really are, well and helps prevent the leading. I hear uh, that when you melt alox in your house, that it starts giving you problems like you know uncontrollable. <laughs> on your body and i don't know it's it's you know, it sticks to it. your speech <laughs> yeah it makes your hair fall out there you go there you go <laughs> all right so um i got a question now walter sure uh, for the 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 lever action rifle the 3030 um we always want to do the best we can it's, this isn't a precision setup here. It's a brush gun. It's a close range gun. Uh, for me, uh, if you can default to matching head stamps, better chamber fit, that's always going to be the best bet. But I do have a question. So what if a guy, like look at me, I got a bunch of brass over here and I have been loading it up at head stamps, but I have some in there that are just kind of all mixed and when I get done, uh, loading all 20 or 30 of those up, mixed head stamps, do you really think end of the day you're really going to uh, have that much less accuracy coming off your lever action? Well, that's a good question, and, and it would, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of parameters that would go in there, and uh, maybe out at 200 yards they might, but, but we all know that this 30-30 is a 100-yard rifle pretty much. Yeah. Um, I, I bet you wouldn't notice you know, well, any yeah. that, you couldn't, that you couldn't attribute to other factors on the same shooting day. I, it, it's, it's just so hard to say, you know, if they were way different lengths so that, you know, when you see the, the, your bullet to the, the cantaloupe on, on, on one case and then and the next one was longer and that made the entire uh, overall length longer. So that would mean you had more volume, you know, empty volume in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that might, you know, affect the pressures enough to, to matter. Um, I know how you can find out. <laughs> Go try well, it. <laughs> I, so I got to tell you, I, I've messed around with it. I, I've, I've taken uh, mixed head stamps. I, I always default to you want to match them the best you can. But I've loaded a bunch of them up, mixed head stamps, and I went out and just offhand, at 25 yards, I'm kicking pop cans all over the place, <laughs> you know. So um, I, you're right. You know, if you're going to put it on paper out to 200 yards, uh, you're going to see um, uh, that's where you're going to see your inconsistencies. But that's not what I use this rifle for. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And, and I'm just I'm going to I'm going to be shooting cans and and targets with mine. Like I said, I'm I'm not going I'm not going out into the woods anymore. I don't think, mm -hmm. but um, the and, and that's just as fun. And actually, I think, and this came up on the on the website I think today, and I forgot who who started the thread about what's your favorite part of the reloading process. Uh huh. And and a bunch of guys had already chimed in on, on that and. I think the the whole thing for me is the satisfaction of going through all of this stuff and and coming up with one of these and then this goes where you wanted it to go. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's in the side of a moose's shoulder or if it's on a little red dot at a piece of paper 50 yards out there to me. Mm -hmm. Um it's it's you know I, I want I want to get a bunch of bu bullet holes kind of all touching each other, you know, x yards down range and if I can design a a bullet recipe that does that for a particular rifle, I, I'm happy. That makes me feel good. Yeah. You know? And plus, when you go, 
and it goes go boom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, it's fun. You know, it's fun to go shoot. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But. So are you using your uh, competition shell holders for your 3030? No, I don't have them for the 3030. Um, I ha The only ones I have are for the 223. That's the only competition shell holder set that I have. And I, I, I just don't see the need for it for the 3030 for me at this point. You know, I'm, I, I seem to be able to get them dialed in. You know, just fine. Um, you know, within reasonable tolerances. Um, and I'm only shooting out of one rifle, and, and this is all brand new brass, incidentally, just like yours. So yeah. I haven't trimmed this stuff. I've actually measured all of these. These are this all brand new Starline brass that I got to start with, and they all come in. I mean, there there's some variety in the case lengths, and so I was tempted to say, well. I'm going to full length size these and then trim them so that they would all be the same. And I said, nah, nah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to go shoot this first batch and, and see what happens with them before I get too excited about dragging out 200 cases and, and trimming them all back to, you know, the, the trim tube length. So some of them, a couple of them are actually shorter than the, yeah. the trim tube length anyway. So, uh, Houston, Walter does not use competition shell holders for 3030 XM out of the live stream. Houston, are you there? No. Okay. Um, so with that, then let's do this. Let's, let's set our, uh, let's set our full length free size die up where we're not using competition shell holders. But we are going to use our case gauge and a uh, our dial calipers uh, as a, a reference. How's that sound? Sounds oh, good to me. This is my case gauge. Um, now, okay. I just asked Walter what he thought about, like matching the same head stamps on cases for the 3030 versus mixing uh will you see a huge difference in accuracy you know it's a it's a it's a brush gun well i would say if you're setting up just for the average guy that cam there you go nice for the average guy that's going to set it up with cam over and crunch it down, okay, uh, that's one thing. But when you're about to do what we're going to do right now, you, you better have your case head stamps matching or you're going to be all over the place. It will really frustrate you. The first thing you got to understand with um, different head stamps is what's that to there? 1.228, and that's without trimming. And I think that's the Sammy Min. 1.229. It's a uh, one. Okay. It's, um, 2.029. Okay. So that um, was actually a little under. Okay. So the first thing you got to understand with when you're using uh, your case gauge for setting up your resize. There's kind of a false, uh, there's going to be a false reading, and that's because uh, the 3030 does not headspace off the shoulder. It headspaces off the rim. So we don't have to worry about our headspace, except we're going to kind of get a, a crazy reading. What we're going to do, um, hang on. Man, some of these cases are so funky. Okay, this is a one spired uh, cartridge case, and I have it in there. As you can see, there we are. We're 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 above the upper step by quite a ways. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a measurement, and actually, we can zero to this measurement, and what we're doing 
is we're going to size that and we're going to get an after reading okay so are you, are you getting a full length resize that yeah mm -hmm. so now what i'm going to do this is my resize die i'm going to run the, the shell holder up and i'm going to run this resize die down just where i'm touching that shell holder and no more okay i still have a little wiggle drop the ram turn the die until okay i still have a little wiggle so now drop it and turn the die a little now our die's locked out now what i'm going to do um I'm going to move my cartridge case. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get everything in here so you can see it. Look at that. Now, you'd say... You mean you size that down 25 thousandths? No. There's a bit of an erroneous reading to this. And the reason I say that is it doesn't headspace off the shoulder. It's a funky case. It headspaces off the, the, uh, the, the head of the cartridge case. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because I only set this up for a very minimal bump. A lot of guys think that you have to uh, take this and you have to go ahead and give it a, a you know a sixteenth or an eight cam over. No, you don't. Not necessarily. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your rifle and with just a minimal bump, That fits. It doesn't take much. Um, the reason I'm I'm telling you this is the biggest reason that guys have a, a problem is this. This is what you don't do. You're not going to come here like this where you just barely have the wiggle out and then turn it for that much cam over. Now what you've done is you've taken this case and you have grossly resized it down past that, that Sammy min. Yeah. And I could go even farther than that, but then just to drive my example home, but you don't need to. What you want to do is you want to sneak up on it. Where you want to begin with this is when we set it up, I'll, I'll do it one more time so you can see it. Huh. That's a, one that's got a primer sticking halfway out. Um, let's think about like your 30-06, 243, 270, 280, all those, all those. It just doesn't <clears throat> apply to this. Um, take your shell, your die up, run your shell holder up, run the die down. You see there's some play in it? Okay, I... I can feel the play right there. At that point is when you're going to begin sizing. If you size it at this point and it doesn't chamber, then begin walking it in in sixteenths of a turn. But certainly don't 
don't go all the way to that eight. And even try in 30 seconds, all you're trying to do is get the slightest uh, bump back on that. Now, for the hunting application, um, you know, I would say where you can actually measure the head space, you want to measure, say, at least uh, for a bolt action rifle, a 2,000th difference, which I'm sure we're getting on this. So does that make sense, Walter? Oh, yeah, sure. And and the guys, um, you should know, and I think High Boy's gone over this before, when he's talking about about sizing the case, he's not talking about sizing this anymore. He's talking about bumping that shoulder yeah. back and, and moving the shoulder downstream a little bit as I, as I'm holding that. Okay. And that's, and that's what is, is happening. Every time he adds a little bit more of a turn onto that, that die, he's pulling the shoulder down just a little bit. Well, and if he pulls it down too far, then the head of that case is going to be down into that case gauge like this instead of up here flush. Okay. Yeah. Or stick out like this. Mm -hmm. if, if it, okay. But if he pushes that, that shoulder back too far, then this thing is going to go down farther into the case gauge than it should. Well, and then in your rifle, that means that it's going to go into the, into the uh, chamber farther than it should. And you got all of this extra space back here between the end of the, uh, head of the case and the bolt face. Okay. And then when your cartridge goes off, that's when we get a lot of stretching down there in this part of the, of the, of the case and mm -hmm. case head separation. So head space is still important with this 30, 30. Look at that. Yep. So you want that case to be not higher than the highest ridge and not lower than the lower ridge. And that's what he's talking about when he's talking about sneaking up on it. You want to get it to fit right in there. So this is a question then. This is a fired case, and look at where the trim length is. So, yeah. you know, with your 3030, you know, you can fire it a couple times without trimming. Obviously, yeah. this, this doesn't need to be trimmed back. So our I, have, I, I was just looking at a, at a bunch of range cases that I have. I don't even know where they came from. I have no idea who shot them or what they were shot in, but I picked them up over the last couple of years. I started measuring them just for that reason that you just mentioned. Is I wonder how much everybody else's cases are growing, <clears throat> and they're all short. They're all they're all right at um, Sammy spec or even a little bit under, having been fired at least once. So two point zero two nine. Yeah, that's right on, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing pretty good. We're going to wrap it up in about 15 minutes. Um, well, is there any questions specific to the 3030 someone wants to ask? I am by I am by no means a pro at it. It's yeah, there's, that I don't load periodically all the time throughout the year. It's something I revisit. And sometimes you gotta scrape the cobwebs out. <laughs> right. And and for those of guys who don't shoot lever guns, um and, and High Boy talked about this in one of his previous videos too, but there's a reason why we have these flat point bullets. And it goes back to our tubular magazine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you can't shoot this the spire points. Um, there are, what is it that that bullet the Hornady makes? It's got the polymer tip, but it's soft enough, so it doesn't matter. Not XTP, XTR. I forgot what they call it. Um, but these bullets are got a flat, nice flat knee plat up there, so that in the magazine in the tube, the nose of the first you know, second bullet doesn't go up there and contact the primer of the one in front of it. You set that rifle down hard or, um, you know, you get an, uh, too much recoil or something, yeah. you know, you know, you don't want a bullet tip up there setting off your magazine load full, full of rounds. So that that's, that's what you got to pay attention. You can't just take any old 308 bullet and stick it in there. No. I guess you could fed them one at a time. But yeah. Flex tip. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, Douglas Kirk, FTX. Yeah, you guys remembered. 
It's a flex tip that Hornady makes. And so apparently you can load those and shoot them in, in, in uh, lever guns. But you I know, never like uh, uh, Douglas Kirk, he's saying FTX Hornady. I, I thought of messing with those. I just don't play with my 3030 enough. Because um, there's other things that I shoot that I just automatically shoot more. That keeps me pretty busy. If I was retired, then I would be revisiting all my firearms more. But um, uh, the, I think the FTX that would be or a flex tip or a, a mono yeah, flex. Yeah, tip. it is. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, to play it's around. a polymer tip. It's a polymer tip, but it's soft enough apparently that yeah, you kind of give to it that it's not an issue. I could. It, it is important to notice that that or to note that there's not a whole lot of bullet choices out there for thirty thirty. No. In a jacketed bullet. There's only there's only a handful. It's not like three hundred eight. You know that I mean, yeah. there's a hundred different choices you can pick for 308 and factory bullets. The, the nice thing about that bullet is the Metplat area, uh, man. When it when it hits, it it hits hard. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to say about a frontal flap section of a bullet slamming into to to mass muscle and bone and crushing it and dropping the animal, versus a pointed tip that kind of can go right through the animal doesn't know it maybe, you know. So, yeah, and I will say the thirty thirty, not. I would have no problem using it as self defense. I would feel real sorry for the person I'm about to let have it because they're going to be really hurting. Yeah, there was there was an article, and I think I posted it either on the Facebook page or on uh, or on our website about the use of the thirty thirty yeah. as a home defense round. Yeah, and the guy had some some good points. I don't know if it'd be my go to. No, without a doubt. It's just something you'd use if it was in your hand when you needed it. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. it's going to get the job done. There's no doubt about that. 762 says Savage made a yeah. Model 340 bolt gun in 30-30. I'd never seen that, that one. I may have to get some of those FTX bullets and play with them. Yeah, I've, ne I've never loaded or shot them, so... I, I have zero experience with them in, in lever guns. Urban assault. Well, right. I, I made a mistake in my live stream today. No one caught what? it. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how to reload, but I, oh, I yeah. caught it while I did it, and I just kept going, and no one said nothing. They didn't say nothing. Yeah. When I set the uh, seat die, um, I squared it to the um, shell holder. And then I was crushing the neck. And then I realized, oh, I was crimping. And I didn't uh, hold up a, a record. But, but when I'm reading comments and all that, yeah, so much, it's easy to make a mistake. Well, and, and let's face it, the <laughs> they all look alike, right? <laughs> all those yeah. am, I, am I turning my, my, my crimp die here? Am I turning my seat die? Am I turning my... my you have that problem, too? Oh my God! So, oh, I know. Um, one another thing that I forgot to mention about this RCBS set is that the uh, deep priming rod on the sizing die does not um, have an excising ball in it. So there. So as you run this case up in there, um, you're not setting your neck tension with that die. That happens with the specific. What are you um, talking about? Standard. The with this RCBS Cowboy set, the depriming rod does not have a neck sizing ball on it. Oh. So when you when you when you size with this RCBS Cowboy set, you you haven't set any neck tension at all yet. So you that and so they they have this specific. Um, flaring die, neck expander slash flare die. Yeah. So that's where that happens. And, yeah. and that's different from some of the two die sets, for example, where that, you know, where the decap pin has a uh, expander ball on it. Mm. This one doesn't. Okay. That's good to know. Hey, I, I got a topic and we're going to, uh, we're going to wind it down in about 10 minutes, just so everybody knows. Um, uh, I have two friends that my wife and I are going to go have coffee with. We're going to buy pie. And I've known these guys since, like, 
I might have went to elementary with him. I don't remember. Who was all junior high and high school. We've always stayed in touch throughout the years. But I haven't seen him for a number of years. And I found out tonight that one of them has MS. And so I'm really sad. I want to see him. And so we're going to go have coffee with him tonight. But, man, life, life is so fragile. And uh, so anyway, um, the other night, um, Reloader762, he scored on some Lyman dies. Um, and I, so after he did that, I went over to eBay and I found a brand new set, brand new, never used Lyman dies for 44 special, 44 mag. The guy was asking 12 bucks and $8 shipping. Well, it got to $12. That's where the bid was. And I didn't check back. And that's what the guy got the entire set of dies for 20 bucks. <laughs> I thought, man, yeah. I wish I would have got those because in my, this is my opinion. Okay. Your dies are the lifeblood of reloading. Basically you don't break a single stage press, but it never hurts to have backup dies. Do you have a thought on that Walter? I do. And I have, I have multiple sets for many of my calibers that I reload for many of the pistol calibers, not necessarily out of need. Um, at the moment, I said, oh, man, here I am reloading, and I need another whole set of dies. But you go to the state sales, you go to the garage sales, you look yeah. on eBay, and you find deals that are hard to pass up. And then the first thing you know is you find a usage. Here's this old Lee set that I got um, at a garage sale uh, for yeah. you know, two bucks or something. I paid for that die, and it was a, a sizing die, pull, a, pull, pull the, or a seating die, pull the stem out. And, you know, and if you, and in the case of pistols, if you're, if you have a couple of different manufacturers, one may have a seating stem that fits some of your bullets and not others. Yeah. And, and vice versa. So if you have an extra seating, seating guy, that may yeah. mean yeah. You, you have a different shaped seating stem. Maybe you've got a flat nose bullet compared to a round nose bullet and you shouldn't yeah. mix those seating stems up um, and and or you get a, a, a crimp die because most of our our uh, seating dies are also crimp dies. Ben, as High Boy was talking about earlier, you don't want to seat and crimp on the same step yeah. if you can avoid mm -hmm. it. So, that, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. And eBay, good place for bullet casters. Go find molds, man. You never know. You know, you, every once in a while you'll get a, a pig in a poke, but um, you can get some pretty good deals on on some of our nice Lyman and, and uh, RCBS molds because they're pricey. You know, Lyman two cavity mold new is almost a hundred bucks time you get it in your house. You can find them used and, you know, in at least yep. reasonable condition. A lot of times you can find them for 30 bucks or less. So. Yeah. Good, good, good live stream. Good, good stuff. Lots of information. How do we do everybody? So uh, today, uh, if you look on my channel, the uh, live stream previous to this, I went all the way through 3030 Winchester. I mean, I went all the way through it. I was very thorough. And I think that I'm going to run this 3030 Winchester through the rest of December. And um, I'm going to be doing uh, the reason. Okay. I want everyone to understand something. The reason I'm doing it is I have all the components. It'll save me money. And I've got some guys that have been buying and they're following along. So it gives everyone in December a chance to do 30-30 win. I didn't, you like that? Uh, you know what? It's going to help a lot of guys. In uh, January, I'm thinking 44 Magnum. What do you think, Walter? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. 44 Mag is a, is a great, great <laughs> round. I mean, yeah. it's, it's been around for a while, and, and everybody knows, you know, yeah. the Dirty Harry weapon, and we've got carbines in 44 caliber, and you can cast for it. And yeah. 44, you've got several choices of, of, of cases. If you want to shoot, you can shoot 44 mag, you can shoot 44 special, you can shoot 44 Russian. So yeah. it's a great caliber to load yeah. and, and, and to cast for. Lots of good choices for bullet casting too. So all of December will be 44 Magnum. And I will, um, towards the end of December, I will put out the components, uh, I mean, the the equipment and the components I'll be using. So whoever wants to buy in on that, if you miss a live stream, there will be another one in January. And if you see every one of them, it gives guys a repetitious use of it. And I don't know what I'll do in February yet. Uh, that's under that's under wraps. 
Yeah. Here we go. Shooter text in time to get my 44 mag contender out. Yep. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, that'll be fun. You know, yep. it's just such a, another very, very versatile round where you've got lots of component choices, lots of uh, firearm choices, and as I said, several different cartridges you can actually load if you've got a 44 Magnum yep. firearm. Mm hmm. Yeah. When will 45 Colt be done? We we kind of went over the 45 Colt uh, earlier this summer, so we yeah. might revisit it later. But I've got some cartridges that I'll be doing. Um, uh, just kind of follow along, like M1 Garand 30 out six. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. I got that one probably February. But I did. 40 says, well, he guesses he needs to go buy a 44. Yeah. Hey, go find yourself a nice uh, uh, Ruger Super Blackhawk, man. Oh. A, a, yeah. a hammer strong, great firearm to shoot 44 yeah. out of. Yeah. Uh huh. And you can buy them all day long for, you know, they're, they're not real pricey. Okay. So I want everyone to know pretty quick here there's going to be regular giveaways on the forum, but in the morning, I'm starting my first giveaway. So go to 76highboy.com, sign up. As soon as I uh, see you come on, I'll approve you to get onto there. And you've got to have regular postings. Um, but, uh, well, I'll tell you what the first giveaway is going to be. Um, I know Walter likes it. The first giveaway is going to be this Winchester. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I need a new one. Mine's 40 years old. Reading, is, Reading is kicking it off with their model number five trickler. Oh, but, nice. Yeah, go over to the forum because they're going to be uh, kicking that off uh, with the giveaway. And uh, what we're thinking is uh, you'll see the rules tomorrow when I post it. You'll see the rules to the giveaway. And we'll give everybody a week. You'll have a week to go in on that post and uh respond to what we ask for and it'll be next friday i will i will call the winner so make sure you follow yeah that's gonna be great it's gonna yeah, be a lot of fun a great prize right there that reading trickler is nice that thing yeah is, i think we're gonna nice. get a lot more uh like i uh yeah i'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag but if you just like a good competition and it's neat when other people win stuff friday's my party Oh, oh, I know. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, okay. Um, any any last thing you want to say, Walter? Uh, not much. Uh, Reb Tyree says forty-five Cowboy Special was a good one. Picked up a Super Blackhawk dirt cheap and forty-four mag. And um, yeah, I've been I've been do doing some more work with the forty-five Cowboy Special, and uh, I found a really good bullet, a really good load for it. That's worked out way better than I thought. And so sometime we can talk about that again too, Reb. Well, you know, maybe this spring we'll revisit it because it's <clears> all <throat> turned to cobwebs for me. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, why don't everybody, um, I want everyone to type 76highboy.com. Walter will call you out. And then if you're not a member, go right over, get signed up because in the morning that giveaway is going to kick off for the week. Okay, here we go. Who's first? I'm there. <laughs> and Mrs. Highboy, of course, is there. Hi, Mrs. Highboy. What, it's you and me, Mrs. Highboy? Come on, you guys. Where we go? There's Sasquatch, seven, uh, seven foot. Okay, and Andy, 79, Z, 28 is here. And... Who else? We got 28 guys or so, guys and gals loaded on. Who else is there? I know it's more than just the four or five of us. They're all signing up on the forum. <laughs> they're all trying to. They're all trying to figure out how to spell 76 high boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that took me a while to learn those first. Those first two letters were tough. Couldn't yeah. find them on my keyboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those first two letters. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs>
Maybe we scared everybody else off. I know there's, I know Red, I know you're here. Come on, man. Kermit loves bacon is here someplace. There's Glock SM40. Now we're gone. What are we, chopped liver over here, you guys? You don't want to say, you know, <laughs> goodbye? You don't want to sign off? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, All right. Must, must be dinner time or Miller time or something. Yeah, and or they're signing up. <laughs> they're jamming. Kermit loves bacon. Thank they're you. Jamming the forum. Kermit oh, loves bacon. Hey, his messages you, Kermit. I don't know. Good to see you. All right. Well, what do you say? You we you call it and close it up there, Walter. All right, guys. Hey, um, yeah, we'll look forward to the next one. Uh, old one guy there, seventy six high boy. He got in. Here at the last minute under the wire. So yeah, and and get over and check out the the website and and uh, look for the rules on the um, on the giveaway. That that's a, that's a great powder trickler, you guys. That thing is really heavy. Some of the lighter weight ones they bounce all around when you're trying to yeah. mm -hmm. you know run them. Um, so and yeah, a couple uh, more. Guy, uh, hi boy, the guy says you, the guys are saying YouTube is messing with them a little bit on their messages. So ah. Uh. Well, it's not us. Trust me. Yeah, I don't think it's us. So, all right. Well, let's let's go to go to party. Let's go to dinner. Go to okay. Another cup of coffee you, and you got it. Think okay. about the next one. All right, guys. Uh, we're gonna uh, do thirty thirty again next uh, Saturday, four o'clock Mountain Time, right here. And I think we'll go more through the actual steps. Me and Walter will go back and forth setting up dies and answering questions. Okay, guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next. Hey, Walter. Yeah. Mess with your endo snake a little bit too. Maybe we'll throw that in. With my witch? The endo snake borescope. Oh, okay. 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 I don't know where it is. I'm gonna I got one buried someplace. I'll go see if I can find it. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll throw it in there next week. Guys and gals, okay. that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.